All right, guys, I got a burning episode for you. It has to do with the last week's shootings that have occurred. The media immediately beginning to spin all this stuff up. Guns. We need Big Brother to step in and solve the problems. But I would submit to you this. I actually see the solution playing out in real time. This target is sad. Not just because I mag dumped into his chest, it's because he doesn't have Aura online security. This video is sponsored by Aura. I trust Aura, I use Aura every day. So does my wife on our phones, on our computers to give us online peace of mind. That rhymed. I like Aura because they got a VPN, antivirus software, fraud monitoring, identity theft protection, and password management. All in one. Furthermore, they found my information on the dark web, something that grates on me, but they helped nip that in the bud. Check out Aura, Aura.com slash WPS. That's Aura.com slash WPS. You get a couple weeks free trial to make sure you'll really like it, but you're gonna. And now I will make the target sadder. Aura, woo! I was just reading about these different shootings. One of them was the Kansas City shooting. There was a Super Bowl party, a huge celebration, a massive crowd had gathered, and two minors, looks very gangish to me, ended up having harsh words for people in the crowd, gunfire erupted, and they were chased down by crowd members and subdued until cops came. Now, in this, one person lost their life, and that is tragic and terrible. Also, 21 people were injured in some capacity. But I feel like if this same thing had happened 10 years ago, the body count would have been much higher. What's changed? What I saw was the people enacting a solution. It was government not being the solution, but we the people standing up and being the solution. The other high profile case I want to center on what happened in Lakewood Church. This is in Houston, Texas. There's a public speaker by the name of Joel Osteen. It was in his place of assembly that a person named... Ganessa Yvonne Moreno. I don't know how to pronounce the first name, but apparently they weren't going for that name for a while because apparently went by the name Jeffrey. Many different arrests, six different arrests, unlawful carrying of weapons, assault of a public servant, assault causing bodily injury, forgery, theft, drug uh, possession. And I read somewhere that a uh, possible diagnosis of schizophrenia. Anyway, labeled as a white female, but born in El Salvador with a Spanish last name, coming to the Spanish church. And so I, I, it looks like the media is just desperate to label anyone they can Caucasian white. Now, I've got to hand it to the two good guys, off-duty cops who were playing zone, who were doing security, saw Moreno enter the uh, premises and ended up getting an exchange after Moreno emptied uh, the first mag they put Moreno down and so killed him. And so this, just like the Kansas City Chiefs, is an example of good guys stepping up and eliminating collateral damage. This person had already illegally possessed weapons before, had all kinds of assaults. What this person was doing on the populace at large, being released amongst the populace at large, I have no idea why they weren't in jail or in a mental hospital. I have no idea. Here's four better questions than how do we disarm mentally unhealthy and physically dangerous people. Here's four better questions. Question one, how do we improve mental health? Guns don't kill anybody. Zero. Guns just sit around on shelves doing nothing. No wills of their own. People kill people. You can have a mass casualty event with a stupid vehicle. And it's not the vehicle's fault. It's the driver's fault. It's not the gun's fault. It's the shooter's fault. And so, since all of these active killer events are happening, and by the way, so many of these people who are so mentally unhealthy have leftist ideologies and struggle with understanding whether they're a male or a female. And that's noteworthy. What is the ideology that's actually infecting them? I would bet academia is very culpable. I'd bet media is very culpable. I know social media is extremely culpable. I think fatherlessness is an epidemic. If strong men were raising kids and being more inactive in their kids' upbringing, they were present, you didn't just ship them off to government schools, I think we could do a great service in improving mental health. The reason why that's never going to get done is because 
they are holding up people who have obvious mental health issues as people who don't have mental health issues. That's right. So they can't, even, they can't even crack a door to it because they can't declare the very thing that people are suffering from that are causing them to commit murder as mentally unfit. How can we ever address mental health when the top institutions of power are promoting yep. it uh, on the grandest scale? We are causing great amounts of confusion and mental unhealth. Let's move on to question two. Why is the government releasing violent criminals and mentally unhealthy people into the midst of our population? They should be in prison or in psychiatric wards, not roaming the streets. And it's these soft on crime policies that are handed down by, uh, by lefties that allow these people to be at large. They shouldn't have been on the streets in the first place. During the COVID pandemic, we saw two years of riots that the left in some of these woke cities just allowed to happen. Raise our cities to the ground, beat people down, destroy and steal whatever you want to do. And we're not prosecuting anyone. Why, why aren't they in jail? Great question. Why, why are they releasing violent criminals or mentally unstable people? I believe it's just classic Marxism. It lines up great. It's put the haves against the have nots, create divi division. This is the age old divide and conquer. And if you can get a population to be warring with each other and afraid of each other, as they're uh, instead of looking at leaders who may be uh, held to some culpable standard, we're looking at each other. And as we fight, they're able to seize massive amounts of control of like, oh, you guys are fighting. Hey, we'll step in and fix your problems. And in desperation and fear in the guise of crisis, we hand over more and more essential liberties until we find ourselves s enslaved to our ruling betters. Let's move to question three. What could be a downside? to passing gun control laws in general and red flag laws specifically. With gun control laws, the problem is, is you will end up punishing the good guys for what just a few bad actors are doing. Every gun law that you create, the good guys who follow laws may disarm themselves. This is why 96% of all active killer events happen in gun-free zones. What you're doing is you're inviting wolves to, to hunt in sheep pastures with no shepherds ready to be able to defend. You've disarmed them. You've taken them out of the fight. Bad guys don't follow laws. So as you make more and more gun control laws, they ignore them. They're criminals. That's what criminals do. And so gun control laws punish the good guys for what the bad guys do, which slant the battlefield in favor of the bad guys. I mean, Mexico is a perfect example of this. Mexico has one of the highest levels of gun control in the world on planet Earth. They only have one gun store in all of Mexico. But uh, you see uh, gun violence is rampant in Mexico, even though they have huge gun control. Now, red flag laws are particularly dangerous. Now, the problem is, regardless of how it's pitched on the public in the first place, oh, it's just a 1% tax on T. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the 40% tax comes after it. You're going to take inch by inch by inch. And so whether red flag law started as something that was just real narrow, real nuanced, we promise not to abuse it, it would end up being abused. I mean, yeah, now, look, at, look at a justice system that's dragging Trump across the coals. Yep, absolutely. Right? I, I mean, yeah, like, like I'm going to trust an impartial magistrate, the same kind of impartial magistrate that just handed down a $350 million, you know, dollar thing to Trump and he can't practice business in New York for three years. Yep. Yeah, yeah I'm going to trust those folks to impartially adjudicate uh, whether I, I am in the right or wrong. That's right. And now anybody can do a tip. Maybe on Twitter, somebody notices that you've got pictures of guns on your profile and there's a new reporting a mechanism on Facebook, and then you can report them, and it petitions, and now red flag laws, and now all of a sudden cops end up at your door. Some people think that sounds far-fetched, but in Canada and the UK, this stuff already happens. In fact, it'll happen for far less uh, things like you have guns, which are already illegal. You may just say the wrong thing. It may be labeled as hate speech and police come to your door. This is not Orwellian. This is not dystopian. This is here and now. You give one centimeter for red flag laws and anybody can disarm you just by saying, ah, mentally unfit veteran, unhinged with right wing conspiracy theorists, Christian, dangerous, domestic terrorist, and all that libel is placed on me because we have competing ideologies about what mental health is. So I want to move on to question four. Quick recap. Better questions than what the media is asking. How do we improve mental health? 
Why is the government releasing violent criminals and mentally unstable people in the populace at large? Three, what could be a downside to passing red flag laws and gun control? The fourth one I want to do is what is worse? Gun deaths at the hands of violent criminals. It's a bad thing. Or giving our government a monopoly on force and violence. Which one of those is scarier? Which one of those is worse? According to the Crime Prevention Research Center, this is an economist by the name of John Lott. He's one of us. He's a good guy. Uh, and he understands the data, the statistics resulting from actual gun violence, but he's not skewing it like a bunch of the media who were bought and paid for by globalists with an agenda. So John Lott, this is Crime Prevention Research Center. In 2022, uh, he gives us the report, 541 people were murdered with rifles. 541. So in all of 2022, with all the mil hundreds of millions of people in the United States, we have a grand total of 541 people that are killed with rifles. Now, it'll be a smaller number that were actually killed with AR-15s. We don't actually have that data, but we know rifles in general, 541 deaths, not even a thousand deaths. It turns out that choking, you have 10 times higher likelihood of choking. So next time you're eating and you've got that chicken wing and you're about to bite into it, know that this has a 10 times higher chance of killing you than an AR-15 does. Let me bring this full circle. You have to weigh between two competing bad things. One of them must be chosen. One, there's going to be a certain amount of gun homicides in the United States each year. Uh, I'd like to eliminate that. But if the answer to eliminating that is to give the government a monopoly on guns, you give them a monopoly on force so that the people are disarmed, governments will do what governments always have. In the 20th century, the 20th century was the most bloody century of all time. Uh, almost 100 million people killed. In, in regimes like Mao Zedong uh, of China, 60 million people. And this is a guy who's turning on his own people. Governments are the top killer of people. That's why our founders gave you the Second Amendment. It was the second thing they did. First Amendment, freedom of speech, religion, assembly. Second Amendment, you're fail-safe to protect all your other liberties. Government cannot uh, keep you from having arms. And beware any government that wants to disarm you. After these high-profile shootings, uh, the Biden administration released a statement urging action on gun control, uh, saying that such an attack to occur during a Super Bowl parade cuts deep in the American soul. Thank you. I wonder who wrote that. It certainly was not, as Andrew Clavin calls him, venal houseplant Joe Biden. Uh, Biden's speechwriter said, today's events should move us, shock us, shame us into acting. What are we waiting for? What else do we need? How many more families need to be torn apart, he said. And then the president urges congressional action uh, to ban assault weapons, limit high capacity magazines and strengthen background checks. That's the play. Step one, government creates a problem. Step two, bad things happen. Step three, the government steps in to solve the problem that they created in the first place. And the solution is give us more power and money. It's the oldest trick. It's the one that makes us really stupid. And at some point, we've got to wise up. Government will not solve the problem on bad people using guns to do bad things. Government is not the solution. You are. What many of you folks on YouTube don't know is the show goes on a lot longer than what you're seeing. We have a Q and ambush, and that's where you guys write in and you ask a question. It could be all kinds of different questions, all kinds of different categories as well. And we also have a hot topic. So we're looking at different newsworthy things and social ills and foibles. And I'm answering that and speaking to that. And then we have a dad joke section. It's real short, but we end the day with that and I send everybody out. So check out watch WPSN. Dot com. That's watchwpsn.com. You sign up, you support us, you get good content, and then you're able to download the app on whatever you use for apps. So WPSN, uh, and I'd appreciate the support. Guys, have a good day.